Alright, so the previous video we graphed our step function. So now we're going to start adding numbers to it when we graph. So again, I, I know that it has to look something like this. So we're still going to be graphing segments. So I just got to figure out the pattern to one of them, and then I got the pattern for the entire graph. So again, to start with, we're going we're gonna to start with our t-chart here. So I'm going to choose 0 for my x. So if I substitute 0 in, we would round first, so we would round to 0, and then we're adding 3. So that would give me 3 for the y. Okay. So even if I choose 0.5, when I substitute in, I would round down. So we would have 0, and then 0 plus 3 is 3. So it looks like it's not going to change again until I get to 1. So if I substitute 1, if we round, that's 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So I'm just going to start graphing that. So 0, and then 1, 2, 3, so here's my solid dot. And be, on my x's, between 0 and 1, I'm going to have that horizontal line until I get to my next one, where it jumps up. So we're at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So that means I'm going to have an open circle here, and I'm going to connect them with a horizontal line. So that's my pattern. So once I figure that out, that same pattern is going to happen. So if I just go up one over one, that's my next solid dot. Up one over one, here's my next one. And I can go in the opposite direction too, so down one, left one, down one, left one. And now I just have to draw my open circles. So for my solid dot, I'm just going to go one unit to the right, and I'm going to put an open circle. And then we connect them into that segment. Okay. So that's what my graph looks like. Okay. Now... As we start looking at this, for our solid dots, it, it's following a very similar pattern that we're used to seeing. So if we think of this in the form of y equals x plus 3, if we were to graph this, we would go up 3 on the y-axis and put our point. Uh, 1, 2, 3. Well, here I'm at a solid dot. And my slope, so I'm going to cover that in blue, my slope is 1, so from my solid dot, I would go up 1 over 1. Well, there's my next solid dot. So up 1 over 1, here's my next solid dot. So really, we can think of this when we're graphing, like graphing a linear line. And then following our slope to get all of our solid dots. And then we would just have to figure out one segment of where we, how long our segment would have to be before we put an open circle. So to kind of show you what I mean, so I'm going to just put it right on the same graph. No, let me grab a little bit different color so it's easier to see. Let's say I wanted to graph uh, y equals, and it's still the greatest integer function, so x, and let's go uh, plus 4. So if I'm going to graph this, I'm going to go up to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my... Yeah, I'm going to change this. Let's do 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my solid dot. And then if I think of it as just x plus 5, my slope is 1. So I can go up 1 over 1 or down 1 left 1. Well, that's my pattern for my solid dot. And my open dot is just going to be one unit to the right for each of these. So that's my pattern. So when we're graphing these, we can really graph them just like a linear equation. So where we would start up on the y-intercept and then do our slope to get our solid dots. And then you just have to be able to figure out the length of one of these segments, and that length is still going to be the same no matter what. Okay. So if we look at the next one, so this one looks a little bit different because now our number's inside our greatest integer function. But if we think about it, whether it's on the inside or outside, I'm still just adding or subtracting whatever this number is. So it's going to do the exact same thing. So really, when I'm looking at this, I can think of it as graphing y equals x minus 3. So I'm going to go down to negative 3. So 1, 2, 3. Here's my solid dot. My slope is 1, so I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And if we just kind of do a t-chart to figure out our length of our segment, so again, if I just choose 0, so 0 minus 3 is negative 3, so that's my y value. 
So if I choose one half, so one half minus three would be a negative two and a half. So that means that I would be rounding back to negative three. So it's still gonna kind of follow that same pattern where it's not gonna change until I put in a one. So if I choose one, one minus three is negative two. Okay. So I'm at one negative two for that solid die. So my open circle is just gonna be one away again. And again, that pattern goes in both directions forever. So when we're graphing these, let's just do at least four of those little segments. All right, so our next one, if we're looking at this, again, it changes a little bit. So our number is on the inside of our graph, and this time we're multiplying. So it's going to follow a slightly different pattern but it's still gonna be very similar to our linear graph. So even if we do our t-chart again, if I choose zero, zero times two is zero. If I choose a half, well, two times one half is one. So my y value has already jumped up. So what that means is, is that the length of our segment is going to get a lot shorter. Okay. So here I'm at zero, zero. And then if I go over a half, I'm already going up one and putting my next solid dot. Okay. So if I choose one then, one times two is two. So I'm going over one, up two. Well, here's my next solid dot. Okay. So it looks like there's only a half a step in between where we would do that open circle. So here's my open circle here, open circle. This one, I'm only gonna go half a space and draw my next open circle, okay? So we're still gonna go over half, up one, so right there, go over another half to draw the open circle. So that same pattern's going to continue forever in both directions. So, when we're multiplying to an x, the bigger this number is, the shorter your segment here is going to be. Okay. Right. And our next one, so again, same idea, we're multiplying on the inside, but now we have a fraction in there. So again, let's just kind of make a t-chart to get a general sense of what this graph is gonna look like. So let's choose zero. So zero times 1 fourth is still zero. And then if we choose one half, so I'm gonna do a little bit of side work down here. So one half times one fourth would be one eighth. So again, we have to round down, so that's still gonna be zero. So if I choose one, one times one fourth is still one fourth, so that means I'm rounding down to zero again. Um, let's try two. So if I choose two, so one fourth times two would give me one half. So still rounding down to zero, um, three. So one fourth times three would give us three fourths. So again, I still have to round that down to zero. Um, let's try four here. So one fourth times four would give me four over four, so that's gonna simplify to be one. So there's my change. So this is giving me the length of my segment. So we're starting at zero, zero. And then there is gonna be four spaces in between until I jump up to my next point. So one, two, three, four, and then we're up one to my next solid dot. So that means the length of my step is gonna get a lot bigger. So here's my open circle right underneath my solid one. And we're gonna connect that together. So from this dot, since I know the length of this segment, it has to be the same at this one. So I'm going to count over four. So one, two, three, four. Here's my open circle. And we're going to connect that together. Same thing on this side. If I go down, my open circle has to be right below it. We're going to count four. One, two, three, four. There's my closed dot. Connect them together. Okay. So if I'm looking at this pattern, this one's nice because it's still following our linear pattern. So my y-intercept would be zero, so that's where we're starting. 
and I'm going up one over four and putting my point. And then we would go up one over four, so here would be my next solid point. Or if we go backwards, it's down one left four. We would go down one, one, two, three, four. Again, here's my open circle, and we would connect those together. So the smaller this fraction is when we're multiplying, the bigger our step is going to be. So these are going to be kind of the types of graphs that I'm going to expect you to be able to graph on a quiz or test.